Hey, this is Mead McLean for AU Squared with the very first uh, Learn Art subreddit lesson. Um, the question that we're going to be dealing with today is a super common one. Um, man, and I forgot I forgot your name. Whoever uh, whoever asked this uh, can't give you a shout out. I apologize. Uh, but the question is, how do you shade with precision in pencil? Um, and he didn't upload an image, so we don't really have a lot to go on. But this is a really common problem, um, and there are a few ways uh, that we can attack this sort of this sort of thing, depending on how the drawing looks. Um, I'm a little bit under the weather right now, but I'm all prepared. I got some hot tea. I got my drawing board, uh, and I've got a brand new sketch pad. So let's do this. All right, let's bring the light a little closer. All right, so I've brought some uh, examples of my old work to, uh, to show you guys what might be going on uh, in this case. Um, let's see, make sure that shot's good. All right, yeah, um, so let's check it out. All right, so what I imagine uh, these drawings to be like right now are kind of um, where I was about maybe like eight, nine, ten, ten years ago, something like that. Um, but uh, you know, it, the drawing might look like this, for instance, um, where you can see there's an emphasis on the contour, uh, and there's beginning to be some emphasis of, of forms within the figure but there's no shading yet and there's not like a lot of sense of depth um, here's another sort of intermediary example um, here you can kind of see uh, an, 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 an anatomical drawing with uh, musculature overlaid on top of the original drawing and the original drawing you can see that there's a lot of going over the uh, outline again and again so it becomes this like heavy outline and there's just like a hint of stuff um, inside the forms but it's really inside the forms where a drawing comes alive as you can see here I mean even with this this difference the musculature and all the musculature lines going inside the form make it a much more interesting drawing uh, even though it's not particularly fantastic um, if you'll f uh, and I brought a couple more examples of, of kind of more uh, advanced stages of this. Um, so here in this drawing there is some emphasis on the contour which I remember you know adding later at the end because sometimes you just really lose the contour when you're working within. Um, but you can see now there's, there's a greater emphasis on defining uh, forms, wrapping lines around forms uh, and, and uh, getting inside the, uh, the, the contour itself. Um, here's another example, um, same kind of deal, another quick sketch, maybe like two, three minutes, um, where, uh, you're just kind of like getting the gesture of it, uh, blocking in major forms, getting a few lines in, but not really getting to, to the, um, shading of it yet or the, or the lighting. Um, but, uh, that's something that you build. Here's, uh, here's yet another example, more of a, more of a portrait. Um, and uh, this you can kind of see here you don't really know where the contour is uh, in in this drawing very much you know the it's kind of uh, it's kind of a little chaotic so it would have been nice to if I had like gone in and and like really picked out some contour to uh, to define this maybe erased a couple of lines um, but you know you can tell that this is more converted towards drawing within the form rather than drawing the contour. So today I brought a banana to draw um, and the uh, the particular mistake that I'm imagining uh, well there are a couple ways it, a couple ways it could be um, let's see save that for later I guess the best thing we can do now is just uh, draw and, and see what happens. 
trying to find a good, not too hard, not too soft pencil. There we go. Nope, that one's broken. All right, I guess I'm gonna start with a uh, with a softer pencil uh, than I normally would. What I imagine is that uh, when you uh, uh, start drawing, uh, and I'm not sure where this person's at, but um, you could be at the stage where you're just looking at the outline or form. So say you wanted to draw this banana, you might come up next to, you might put it on your paper next to you and just start uh, following the contour of the banana uh, as it goes along, uh, drawing basically sort of to scale. Um, and you wind up with kind of a banana looking thing eventually. And all your attention is focused on getting this outline of a banana correct. And then once you get the outline uh, kind of accomplished, you come back and go, okay, well, I want to refine it, make it closer, more banana-like. But uh, you're still not happy with the results, so what you do is you keep going around the outline and refining it, making the outline better, thinking that that will uh, produce a better drawing when it's just not going to. Um, and one of, the, one of the mistakes that you make when you set up a drawing like this sometimes is you kind of put it flat someplace and you try to draw its contour. Like if you are drawing your hand, you'd put your hand down here and try to draw your hand. Um, but this kind of robs you of some of the depth that, that you can create. Um, you know, if you, if you start into the shade at this point, you know, you might, you might find some shading here. Um, you know, you might see a little shading here. So you put something there. There's this little dark spot here. So you draw that in, uh, you kind of draw this line here, it's a little darker here, and then you might even get to the point where you're drawing the shadow out. So it does start to get some depth here, but not the degree that you would like, right? And then you kind of shade that real dark and heavy. Um, and you make a drawing, you know, that looks something like that. Uh, and that's, you know, where everybody starts out. I mean, I mean I've been there for sure. Um, but uh, this is kind of, um, uh, let's talk about where you, where you, can, uh, where you can head with this. Because you can take a couple of, uh, a couple of different, different directions. Um, there we go. I'm gonna pick a harder pencil for this. So instead of instead of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the uh, banana up uh, in a different way. Let's show you guys that. I'm gonna set it up so I'm looking at it looking at it like that, right? So you can see that along the banana, you can you can see the form a little bit better. You can see the curvature. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to draw, but the rewards are, are better. You can see you can you have the depth of shadow here, um, and you've got all these contour lines and, and shadows that you can get into when you're drawing this banana. So when you're analyzing it, when you're looking at it first, you know you know the light is coming in from this sort of direction. So the highlight of the banana is going to be right here. This is going to be the lightest spot. The darkest spot's going to be right probably right along this edge. Um, another dark is going to be actually in the light side, so you're going to have to compensate for that. Um, and then everything else is going to kind of be uh, in these in these middle tones, which is where drawings get interesting. So I'll show you how I might um, approach that. Check the focus. All right, cool. So first, what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to kind of get squared off to my to my page so that I'm looking at it in, in a very perpendicular sort of way. Um, and then I'm going to um, work really lightly. I'm only going to work on this like very, you know, gentle sort of plane 
which you can probably barely see. Um, and then I'm going to build up to the uh, to the uh, depth of shadow that I want. I'm just going to make this a little more dramatic with the lighting, just to give it some more contrast that I can work with. All right. So. Instead of starting with, with drawing the contour, all I want to do is I want to feel the middle of the banana uh, or whatever form you're working with and draw a line that sort of represents the flow of how that goes. And uh, it's a curved object, so the flow is going to have to curve and have this feeling of coming towards you uh, in space. And this may or may not have anything to do with the uh, actual contour. Uh, I could use this as a contour line if, if it uh, happens that, uh, that it intersects somehow. So from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to uh, uh, express a little bit of, of volume in, in the uh, banana. I'm going to start to wrap some lines uh, around it before I even get to the the final contour because I want to make sure that this is going to be a, a dimensional thing um, and then I can use little bits of contour uh, to uh, represent how these forms turn in space So if you were to do a cross section of banana, it's not going to be uh, perfectly round like that. It's actually going to have these sort of uh, these sort of flattish spots. So it's going to be more uh, hexagonal, pentagonal, whatever. Uh, but it will have these like rigidly defined contour lines on it. So I'm going to use these these lines to kind of uh, begin to. Uh, define some of the volume in the banana. Um, and you always have an opportunity when something is projecting towards you to create more depth in the final drawing. So you can probably see now uh, that I'm still working pretty light, uh, but already I've kind of got the general shape of the banana uh, outlined. I see here that there's another contour that I can get into here, which remarkably lines up on, on a lot of spots with the uh, original sort of gesture line that I drew. All right, so I've kind of got this banana a little bit blocked out. So once you're here, the problem is what do you do next? Um, the uh, next thing most people would do would be to like just get really dark, you know, just dig in, you know, get these dark lines. But what you actually kind of want to do is, is uh, is define uh, a little bit of the shadow in kind of a general way um, and still keep it light. You want to give yourself room to work as the drawing develops. And then what I like to do since this I've put this banana on a box is I'm going to indicate this the plane of the box as well. So this is really going to give this uh, a lot of space that we're working with. Hmm, a little more over here. So here's where it helps to know your perspective. So at this point, you should kind of be able to tell that the 
banana itself is on a plane. Uh, so uh, I'm going to keep refining these contours. So one of the common shading techniques that you can do is uh, you can take a figure, uh, say a sphere, right? That's one of the common things you can do. So you, say you have the sphere that you've drawn or are drawing and the shadow goes along this edge. Uh, what you can begin to do is take, you know, the dark half and the light half, divide them, and sort of make a medium dark on the dark half. Um, this, uh, this is called um, the poster technique because you have exactly two values uh, on here. And then as you develop the drawing, you can make it more and more sophisticated. So I'm going to do a poster technique of sorts with this banana, uh, starting in uh, with the shadow. Just staying pretty loose with it. I kind of like to go all directions with my marks. The way you make marks is going to be part of your, uh, your signature style. So that's up to you how you want to do it. I also know that this is going to be part of the darks. Right along the inside of the banana. Because I know that no light is hitting that. I'm going to block this in as well. So here we kind of have a messy poster of the banana um, so you're always going to want to and you're always going to want to do this like start start this messy uh, start with some grit in your drawing and then refine and refine and refine and refine um, so now we have a, uh, a blocking out um, so it's time to kind of uh, get a little more specific um, and the values that you see I see a nice rich dark along the bottom here. And this rich dark doesn't belong to the banana, but to the ground under it. So I'm going to start blending that in to the ground under it. And I notice that it kind of stops here, it doesn't continue all the way around. So what we've noticed so far is that it's not the shading itself necessarily that can mess you up, but the way you set it up, the structure uh, of the uh, of the object that you're working with. Um, if you're working on this contour, uh, on the contour like this, um, it's going to be very tough to like get inside that sea shadows and really uh, get anything uh, even remotely accurate. So there are a couple of light sources in this room, so there's going to be a couple of different shadows at work. There's one going along here. Then there's a slightly more uh, blurry shadow sort of a tertiary shadow here just to get this uh, into a deeper range so what you have to do is as you're as you're working into these shadows um, you kind of have to pick a value to start with and then push all the values back and down and darker each time as you pass through an area so darkening that has opened me room to darken this, which is going to open room to darken this. And that has opened, now opened room to darken this shadow.
okay? And here I haven't even really worked into the, into the banana, but yet there's getting to be like a sense of depth. Uh, if I squint my eyes, I can kind of see that there's starting to be a form that's gonna pop, it's gonna pop forward. Um, just for the sake of the drawing, even though it no, isn't necessarily actually that way, I'm gonna just slightly darken the background uh, to make it seem like this banana is the brightest thing on the page. So now you can kind of see the banana itself is, is starting to pop, is starting to pop out um, and become dimensional on the page. So here, here I can begin to get a little more uh, specific in the uh, way that this is working. So these lines, this part of the banana is basically vertical. Um, and then this plane is kind of going in a different direction. So I'm going to use different lines to kind of represent that. So I have vertical-ish lines, I have lines going this way, and then I can kind of use curved lines to express the curvature of the banana this way if I'm going to do any shading. I notice there are a couple of brown spots, so I'm going to start to block those in. Just use some basic cross hatching. And uh, you know everything. Everything that you do when you do a drawing like this, you wanna you wanna do to to create uh, to create form. Yeah, it's important to do something interesting compositionally, uh, you know, in a in a two dimensional way. But really, forms are forms are where it's at. So if you can think of your page as a uh, three-dimensional space that you're drawing into, then you're going to be better off. So just along the edge of the banana itself, where it meets the shadow, there's going to be just a touch of reflected light. So uh, as I approach defining the contour, I'm going to leave a little room for the, uh, for the reflected light under it, around the banana itself. So it's good to have like, you know, a hard and a soft pencil, maybe some in between just to kind of work through different different effects that you can get. Uh, anyway, as I'm as I'm adding these darks, I'm adding more detail, uh, reobserving, I'm always I've always got my eye on what I'm drawing. So I've noticed here what I haven't what I haven't noticed before is that there's a little shadow over here. So as you move along the drawing, then you can start to add in some contour, just to just to make it a little bit defined. But what you don't want to do is uh, commit to a contour too early and then not be able to change it. 
without getting into heavy erasure. Whenever you get to the edge of a form, you always kind of want to draw over the edge of it into a darker area if it's there. You can still keep that reflected light going. I'm getting a little heavy here just to show you kind of how these contours overlap so you can see it on on video so um, let me zoom in on it a little bit there you can kind of see the beginnings of a banana happening this is how you block out and begin to to shade uh, with pre precision so you can see that there's definitely um, a clear contour developing. Uh, there's your dark spots, your mediums, uh, lighter and lighter and lighter. And eventually, if I were to work this up over a couple of hours, this right here would be the lightest spot and there'd be some deposits of value on all of these. Um, so you just follow this process of like, you know, just uh, covering an area real lightly, uh, working it then working areas around it to kind of make it look appropriate and uh, keep going from there. So I'm going to cut the uh, lesson short there because um, uh, I think that's kind of uh, uh, at least something that can point you in the right direction. And uh, once again, I am uh, Mead McLean for AUSquared.com and uh, I will uh, I will see everybody on the next Learn Art uh, subreddit question.